Ti.
ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Hello. Okay. Before the third and fourth grade get started, we're going to play a little game. Are you guys ready? Okay. Um, so the third and fourth grade are going to be talking to you today about who God wants us to be, what kind of character we should have. Oh, no, the head fell off. It's music. Okay. Just give me a second. Okay, so <laughs> our, we're going to be talking about who, who Jesus calls us to become. We're, we're born as God's creations, right? But because of sin, we're not exactly, we don't always do exactly the things God wants us to do, right? And God wants us to keep working our whole lives to become more and more like Jesus. And sometimes that's hard. Do you think so? 
Yeah. All right. So I have Levi and Sophia are going to come up. And they each made a little sculpture that shows, that represents, it's a symbol of who they think God is calling them to be. So you're going to kind of hold those up and walk down a little bit. So Sophia made a beautiful representation of the cross, and Jesus is there, and it's reminding her that she is called to be more and more like Jesus. And Levi made a beautiful heart. It has his initials on it, and that reminds him that he's supposed to be loving and caring to other people. Do you think those are pretty good symbols? Those are good symbols for who, for who God wants Levi and Sophia to be, right? And they worked hard on them. Do you see how detailed they are? Hold it up without falling the head. Okay. They, they did a good job, didn't they? All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a relay race. And we're going to use the symbols here as our baton. How many of you have been in a relay race? So you know what you, to do, right? You run part of the race, and then you pass the baton to somebody else, and then they run part of the race, and they pass the baton to somebody else, right? Okay. We're, well, today's the day. You're going to do it. All right. So let's have a couple of volunteers. We need um, four people per team. I see you. Come on up, Elena. And CJ, come on up. And, yep. Come on up. Mrs. Mueller, is there someone who never gets called in chapel from kindergarten? Never. This is, this, this is it. You've been called. Lisa, come on up. So we need um, one, two, three. One, two, three. We need two more people. Um, you don't want to do it? Okay. That's fine. All right. Caitlin and... Madeline. Yes. All right, so we have Team Sophia is going to be over on this side. Madeline, you're going to be on this team. Oh, it's accidentally an all-girls team. That's okay. And Team Levi is over on this side. So here's what we need you to do. Caitlin, you're going to go down and stand by the doors. And Lisa, you do the same. Go down and stand by the doors. That's going to be your post. And Elena, you go stand by that other door. And CJ, you go stand by that other door. And, yep. And um, Tony, wait over by Miss Murray, like a little bit past Miss Murray. And Madeline, wait over by Jack. Okay. We're almost ready. So here's what's going to happen. Levi and Sophia are going to race down, and they're going to pass the baton to the next person. That person's going to race around to the next person and pass the baton, and that person's going to race up here and pass the baton, and then come back up here. We got it? Yes. On your mark. Wait, no, uh, uh, uh. Don't speak for me. Thank you. Are we ready, Mrs. Flory? Okay. On your mark. Get set. Go. Ooh, they're off to a great start. You should be cheering for them. <laughs> oh, Jesus' head is gone. Oh, grab it. Uh, Tony, right up here. Okay, oh. Oh, do, oh, do you guys see what happened there during the relay race? The, these sculptures got a little bit battered, didn't they? Yeah. Jesus' head fell off, so did part of the cross. They're made out of Play-Doh. Play That's true. And it's soft. All right, go have a seat, guys. Great job. But this is going to help us remember something. A relay race can be a little bit stressful, right? If you've ever been in a real relay race, you know that you feel obligated to your team to do a good job. Tony, I think you were right up here. There you go. Um, and if you drop the baton or something, you feel really bad. So relay races can be stressful. And this is to remind us that even when we're in a stressful situation, even when we're 
the world is telling us we need to be certain things. Maybe we need to be really successful, and that means being mean to other people. Or maybe we need to be really rich, and that means being selfish. We need to remember who God wants us to be and not be smushed by the pressures of the world, right? We have to remember that God asks us to be a certain kind of person, and that's what we focus on. All right, I think we're ready for the message. Wow. When I think of fruit, I think of something tasty and sweet, a bright red apple or a juicy peach or a nice yellow banana. God grows good fruit, only it's not the kind you eat. Imagine a healthy tree all, wait. Imagine a healthy tree with fruit growing all over it. That big, strong tree grew from a tiny little seed. It grew roots and grew a little sprout, and then it grew up and up, stronger and stronger. And branches began to grow, and then little leaf buds appeared on the branches. And the tree grew and grew and grew, until one day it was a great big tree with lots of tasty, tasty sweet fruits on it. God wants his children to grow strong. He wants his children to have the Holy Spirit's kind of fruit. That is better than any fruit you can eat. I am ready to grow strong, just like the fruit tree. Why? Because I have received the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart, and because I am filled with the Holy Spirit. Each fruit of the Spirit shows what the Lord Jesus is like. Jesus is kind and good, and the Holy Spirit helps me be like him. I like to think about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When I pray, I ask the Lord to make them grow in my life. Here they are. This first one is love. God tells me to love him with all my heart. He tells me to love other people too. When I love someone, I treat them the way I want to be treated. Love makes people happy. When I care more about somebody else than myself, I have the fruit of love. The second is joy. When I love the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit fills me with a happy heart. If I ever become sad or mean, it does not ve last very long because the Lo Holy Spirit helps me to be happy again. I feel joy when I see someone who's happy because something I did for them. Joy can be giggly, but it can be quiet too. Joy is happy. The third is peace. Peace is knowing God is with me every moment of every day. I can speak softly and not scream. I can be nice and not grumpy. I can be alone and not be afraid. I can smile and still be happy when I don't get my way. Because inside my heart, I'm quiet and peaceful. That's the peace the Holy Spirit gives me. The fourth is patience. My patience with others shows that I understand them and care about them. I am able to wait, to wait for things even if I want them right away because the Holy Spirit helps me be patient. gentleness. The Holy Spirit helps me be gentle even when it is very hard. Being gentle is also being kind. Kindness is acting out love towards someone even if they don't show me love in return. 
If I'm not gentle when I play with things, I can break them. I must be gentle with my friends, with younger children, and with older people, too. The Holy Spirit helps me be gentle even so I won't hurt anything or anyone. Then there's goodness. Jesus gives me the Holy Spirit to help me be good. This means being thoughtful of other people. It means being generous, too, and obeying my parents. There are many other things that being good means. Can you name some? Joella. Seventh is faithfulness. Each day my faith and trust in God grows. Without faith, the other fruit of the Spirit wouldn't be able to grow. Here's how my faith grows stronger. When I learn from the Bible each day, when I pray to Jesus, and when I worship God with other Christians. Humility is next. I know that Jesus doesn't want me to be selfish, and the Holy Spirit shows me how to care about other people. He helps me be polite to others and to share even when I don't want to. Last is self-control. When I'm off with a cookie, I wait for my turn, and I only take one. That is self-control. In church on Sunday, I don't talk loudly and wiggle around in my seat, even though I want to. That is self-control the Holy Spirit gives me. Jesus Christ is loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, gentle, good, faithful, humble, and in control of himself. And he is much more than that. Even though I'm only a child of God, I can have these fruits of the Holy Spirit in my life because Jesus helps me. Jesus is my role model. According to Jesus in Luke 6, 43, a good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. A good person produces good things from a treasury of a good heart. When I have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, everyone can see what Jesus is like by watching what I do and how I speak. Sometimes, though, when the Holy Spirit wants to produce a fruit in my life, I won't allow him. I can't show any of the fruit of the Spirit unless I allow him to help me. But the Holy Spirit always wants to help me. And just like that little tree that grew and grew and grew, I'm growing up as a child of the Lord Jesus. He wants me to learn about the fruit of the Holy Spirit and to pray to have them. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, give, please give me the fruit of the Holy Spirit. 
I am only a little child, but I want to be more like you. I want other children and grown-ups, too, to know how much you love everybody in the whole world. And I want to show you to other people in the way I act and speak. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.